What I do is inconsequential. Why I do what I do is I get to shorten people's journeys every day. What I love about our hospitality industry is that it's our mission to make people feel cared for while on their journeys. Together, we'll explore what hospitality means in the built environment, in business, and in our daily lives. I'm Dan Ryan, and this is Defining Hospitality. Today's guest is an innovative industry leader. He's a hospitality guru. He's Senior Director of Design and Project Management for Luxury Brands at Marriott International. He's an architect by training and a converted admirer and raving fan of interior design. Ladies and gentlemen, Osvaldo Arios. Osvaldo, welcome. Hello, how are you? Welcome. It's so good to see you. Um, I don't know if many people know, but I think what I'm most intrigued about with you, because like one of my heroes, as far as the independent or the lifestyle boutique hotel world is Ian Schrager. And you came out of the blue with very little or no hospitality experience. You can clarify that in a second to help kind of pilot the launch of Edition Hotels, which was the joint venture between Ian Schrager and Marriott. And I think, and this also comes up a lot in these conversations where it's this idea of rookie smarts. It's having someone come in with no experience, but you have the skill set to like execute vision and create space, um, but having a fresh perspective and no baggage to help create this incredible thing that Edition has become. And now, um, how did all that happen? Like, how did... How did you wind up coming from no hospitality experience to really championing an incredible um, initiative, which is Edition Hotels, within our industry? And I would say a transformative um, initiative within our industry, especially because to me, what's also so unique about it as well is, you know, Ian Schrager was just kind of always out in his own world. And Marriott's this huge corporation. And I don't know, it just seemed so cool to bring those two things together to create this unique experience, how did it all come to be? Yeah. Well, first of all, let me um, thank you for having me over, having me in, in the podcast today. Um, you know, it's been, I've been with uh, with uh, Edition for about 15 years now. So it's, it's been a long ride and it has had many, many changes up and down. But uh, the way it started, so, uh, my my um, background is in architecture, so I went to school in uh, architecture school in um, Venezuela. Got a family mm -hmm. over there. Uh, then I moved to the U.S. to do some uh, master studies, and you know, just look, try to look for something different. Uh, so I was pretty much basic on the traditional or or train of the traditional way of architecture. So I was doing, you know, I did some design work and master planning, uh, retail planning, a little bit of everything, you know, like when you're in architecture, do whatever comes in, correct? Um, and then through a friend of mine that I did some work with in my old firm, and she was now working in Marion on the interior design side of Marion, she reached out to me and said, hey, you know, there's rumors here about, you know, a new brand and they're looking for somebody. You know, are you interested in all that? So, well, you know, that sounds like got me up an interesting change, you know, after you've been doing the other stuff for a while. And um, so I went and interview uh, uh, and then found out, you know, the, the company had these plans to create a new brand, actually from the scratch in the company. And they were looking for somebody that didn't have any preconceptions on, on any of hospitality um, design in my Previous life, I've done very, very little hospitality in terms of, and, and always from the architectural point of view, you know, of the planning, uh, but really, really uh, nothing significant. So, um, so I met in, uh, you know, the the hired manager, and, and you know, got to know the idea, and the more and more I know about it, it became more intriguing. Uh, Keep in mind that this is when Marriott was, it's not like a Marriott you have right now, which has, you know, 35 brands and there's a lot of lifestyle uh, brand component in the, in the company. This was very, um, the company was still very much like a Marriott in a courtyard and, you know, very the core of, of our business. 
So um, there was this idea about creating the boutique hotel. Mm. Uh, and, you know, the idea of this partner with this guru of, uh, of uh, boutique hotel design, you know. And, I mean, to be honest, I was just, it's all new to me. So it was, it was, it was pretty, pretty neat. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, the, the idea, you know, um, Marriott wanted to create this boutique brand, but they didn't want it to be anything like the brands we had before. Uh, the, the history goes that Mr. Marriott went to, um, was presented the opportunity. He was reluctantly, he, you know, he was much more conservative in a sense. Um, and this was kind of a little bit out there. Um, so uh, a little bit, I think like if you go back 15 years when that's there, I don't think it's a little bit. I think it's, it's so far out there that to bring these two totally different worlds together is like, I would say revolutionary. It, it was so it's surprising and crazy. It was, uh, it, it was crazy. I mean, it's, it's funny. We have some presentations of the brand where you have the two of them, you know, portraits of the, the two of them at the same time, you, you realize how, how drastic the, the difference was. But, uh, but what happened, what did it, I think, it was uh, Gramercy Park Hotel. So in mm -hmm. those days, Gramercy Park was just open. It was a really uh, a big success um, in the design world. Of course, everybody, you know, everybody was so interested and it's, it's, I mean, it's a beautiful hotel. Uh, and I was so, uh, you know, um, almost uh, like a scenography, you know what I mean? Like, like a theater set, you know, was so, so intense. Uh, so Mr. Mayor went and visited the, the property uh, and to the hotel and made we and all that. So long story short, I wasn't there, but um, that was what convinced Mr. Mary to move ahead with the partnership and kind of like to see, you know, this is something that could work. So back to, to my role. So that's when I started, you know, we, you know, one of the first things that we did is we went up to meet with Ian and go see Gramercy Park and to Gramercy Park and all that. And uh, one of the basic things that, that I was told as part of the early team at the beginning is that we want to have a hotel that doesn't look like a Marriott, doesn't feel like a Marriott, doesn't, <laughs> that people doesn't know it's a Marriott. It's just from the fact that we wanted something different. So we wanted some, something that wasn't tainted by, um, you know, uh, old habits and old rules and, and uh, you know, that the, this should be like this done because it's always been done this way type of uh, attitude, you know? This is where we do things, you know? So I couldn't bring that any of that because I've never done it. So it was a, it was a perfect match. And uh, the, the interesting thing about it is uh, working with Ian and working with his team is that uh, they will question a lot of the, our, our standards. You know, we have a, a big book about, you know, Bible of standards um, and, um, they will question a lot of these things. You know, why do you have to do this? Why is the reason why, you know, which was really interesting for me being early on in the process that I have to really think well, about it. And actually, that's that's really incredible to hear because they brought you in as having, I mean, you have, you've experienced hospitality before, but from what I heard, what I heard from you speaking earlier is as an architect or as a designer, like you, you never worked in that space, right? So right. you're getting this crash course to bring these two things together. Immediately, I'm hearing you say that the Schrager team is like, why are all these standards the way that they are? And you're there kind of as the, the go-between with yeah. having no experience. I guess like, how did you define, and I, I wanna get more into the story as well, but like, how did you define hospitality before that first meeting and getting all those standards and dissecting them. And then over the 15 years, how has your definition of hospitality um, evolved? Well, it changed a lot, definitely. I mean, before, I would say before, um, before I started working in Maryland, in addition, my hospitality idea was more of a, you know, the traditional hospitality, the really, you know, overdone spaces and very impressive, you know, stairs dripping down into the lobby and all that, you know. Uh, and that was kind of like the image that you have, you know, the, um, you know, the fancy restaurant with tablecloth and everything perfectly laid out and all that around you and, and this. Uh, so when I started out, you know, or after I'd been doing, um, working on edition for a while, it's changed so much because, 
now uh, the way I see now hospitality and hospitality is more of a um, it's a combination between you know what you feel and, and the experience that you get into the space and that is combined design, combined service, you know, every little piece of it, uh, the way that somebody talks to you and so the way that uh, that the space feels and smells and um, and in the I think that the the big difference is that uh, you have to combine all these pieces together uh, really carefully. You know, it's, it's one of the things that we do, I think, very well in, in our brand is that uh, we have very close team that works together, the operation part of the team with the design part of the team. Mm. But we are really careful about how things work seamlessly. And uh, it, it kind of, in a way, you're kind of providing the stage for this, for the, for the staff to do the work and all that, you know. And you do it now. So, you, so it's so it's like you just said something interesting. You were providing a stage for them to do that. It is a stage because oh. it, it, you know it, it is a little bit of like that's what you're doing. You you are, you're doing a stage for staff. You're doing a stage for people to to a little bit of perform and sit down and enjoy the space, enjoy a bar, enjoy the lobby. But the whole thing is, you know, the light of it. You know, for example, is a really important piece um, for us. You know, that you will see, for example, you go when you go into our uh, reception and to the check-in desk that, you know, in some hotels you have these really beautiful plants or whatever, or this in the back artwork piece, you know, that and, and our registration is very focused on, on the person that is going to talk to you, you know, the, mm. the stuff that's going to receive, you know, that and everything is just kind of like a little bit of background to that experience instead of trying to grab the attention from the experience. Yeah. So when I, when you first started talking about, you, you know, your initial, just how you experience hospitality, not as a designer, I got the sense that it was um, a lot of this grand over the top luxury, flat press tablecloths. And then I heard it kind of transform into this idea of a stage, right? For a stage for the guests, a stage for the, the team working there um, and, and the overall experience. So that's a that's a very different journey from your original, like just the the how you identified hospitality when when you began, to where you are now, or to where you've evolved. Now where you are is like how do you define hospitality now after these fifteen years of experience of merging these two really different um, ideas of hospitality together? Yeah, a hospitality in general, you mean? Yeah, it's. Uh... Yeah, um, you know it. It is you know it's one of the one of the, the amazing things about working in hospitality is like the ingredient of the people that work in the hotel is so important. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and um, on on the luxury side of things, you know, and, and I don't know it's because maybe the change in in people's you know, or in, in the population age maybe changes. There's a lot of younger people. Mm. and for luxury level things so so you get into a, a lot more it's almost like i said an informal luxury experience in hospitality um but is um it, informal but um in a sense you know for example and uh, to explain a little bit better on on, on the edition we always talk about calling things for what they are you know in, in a in, in the old fashioned or a more traditional luxury property, you call in room dining, for example. In addition, we call it room service. You know, we're more, it's, it's more like straightforward. It's more like, you know, it is what it is, move on, you know. It's security guys, not the loss prevention, whatever, whatever. It's just a security person on the property, you know. So we, we try to be a little bit more, less or, or less of that type of, uh, you know, um, all like we, we think it's old fashioned luxury, a little more more modern, contemporary way to do it. But that doesn't mean that it's not a sophisticated space, or it is a you know there is a lot of carefully you know um, attention to detail and things you know. But it is in a different level. Um, why do you, why do you think? Actually, before I ask that question, so in hearing the vision of, of Mr. Marriott to kind of make this deal happen with Schrager mm -hmm. to do addition. It's, you know, you had the old school Marriott, then 
this new edition thing, new, it was almost like the the spear point of a new direction that now Marriott has what, like 30 something brands. They've really filled in the whole spectrum of lifestyle, independent, all the way to luxury, all the way to back, like that, that from the courtyard, all the way up to the edition or St. Regis or, or what have you. Um, but I think it was an important um, trailblazing move to help get Marriott to where they are now. Why do you think for such an important endeavor, that spear tip of you, if you will, of this new evolution, why do you think they would put someone like you in there with no experience of hospitality? Because I, I think, it, then again, I think that's, that's the whole idea, not to get, um, in, in one way to, to let Ian be the stronger piece of the, of, of the team in the sense that, you know, not getting into the, into the, into the, you know, doing things the way they, they usually done and more learning from what he's brought to the team. You know what I mean? That, that the idea at the time was like, you know, we need to, we need to absorb this and, and, and make sure they protect this brand from, um, from the rest of the operation. You know, I mean, it's, it's a big company. So it's, uh, and having this separate kind of secluded team and, and, and you know, for the, for a long time, we were kind of like a little bit quieted because we didn't have any properties open and we are still trying to figure out uh, the way we do things and the way, you know, and, and from a development point of view, or, you know, it's, it's hard to start a property uh, or start a brand with having nobody uh, knows about it, you know, because everybody comes after they've seen some, you know, of outside owners and interested developers, but you don't have anything to show for it. It's very hard to, to, uh, to do it. So for the longest time we we're, we were working on a set of feasibility mode, looking at properties. We got this very quietly. You know, we used to be called the boutique hotel in, in the company. We didn't have a name even by then. So, so um, how, how long was that before? Okay. So you came in, you interviewed, you got hired by Marriott to be yeah. the outsider. How long did that onboarding for you at Marriott last before you got um, indoctrinated into um, Schrager's world. Oh, that started right away. I mean, like I tell you, we met Ian uh, and his team the for the first couple of months after it started. So oh, wow. it was just a starting point um, that we we took from there. Uh, uh, and then, know, uh, well, wait, just just to build on that one. So it was a you met the you met with that team pretty much right away. And yeah. then how then you you have to concept and come up with this and kind of sell the vision to outside developers and owners. How long was it from when you first connected with them till you had your first shovel in the ground, so to speak? Well, it's, uh, oh, you know, it probably went up about a, <clears throat> I said about a year and year or so that we went through the whole process of, you know, we had standards. Can we adapt the standards to this brand? And, you know, do we want to have standards, you know, question every little piece of it coming up with an ideal program for a hotel, what it should have or it shouldn't have, you know, looking at other hotels to see should we map, uh, model after uh, Gramercy Park or after any other, uh, you know, uh, type of property was what should be a room size? You know? Should we have uh, separate toilets in the bathrooms? You know, all, all that kind of like, you know, trying to decide um, how the, the brand should, should, you know, be and what the program should be and before even how it's going to look. You know? uh, and, and then, and then also, so actually to me, I'm surprised to put these, these two different parties together, then to just go in, to have a shovel in the ground after nearly one year and all that concept, that seems like super fast to me. You um, were very that's, fast, yeah. that's really impressive. And he was, what was, it, what was it like when you first met, um, Ian and his team, like what, 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 if you go back into your memory, like what did that, Yeah. what did that feel like? You've been indoctrinated a bit in the Marriott onboarding, right? And then you're, you're introduced to their, what was that first experience like? It was, it was very exciting to be honest. I mean, by the time I was there I already, you know, um, knew more about Ian and the work he's done and all that. And, uh, and of course I was very impressed and, and admired the, all the work he has you know, developed through the years. So it felt like a little, like, you know, you, you're, 
like you're in a really important place in time, you know what I mean? This is a great opportunity. This is a, you know, you kind of get the sense that this is, doesn't happen every day and doesn't happen for everybody, you know? So, yeah. so it's a pretty, pretty good feeling to have. Um, so a feeling of like inspiration and, and excitement. Yeah. This is something big we're going to be doing here. You know, this is something new, this is something big. Uh, you know, you feel like you're in a very special spot. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, was there anything like if you were to look at the Osvaldo from before that indoctrination and the Shra with the Schrager team, like, and specifically Ian, because I see him as such like a visionary, different thinker. Yeah. Like, how how has that singular person changed the way you look at things? Um. I will say, you know, like like what a little bit of what I was telling you before about the way you see the whole luxury, um, you know, luxury design and luxury experience on a hotel, you know, that's definitely changed since I've seen it. And and also, um, I would say, you know, give me a little bit of window into into perhaps a world that I wasn't too familiar with, you know, in terms of design, high level design, uh, you know, having the opportunity to work with very good designers. Um, and really being involved in the on the process, you know, to a certain mm -hmm. level, working as a team with them. Um, you know, to, just to give you a little bit of history, for example, we started our first project that we worked on. It was a uh, project in Waikiki called the, the Waikiki Edition. It was like Yabu mm -hmm. Kushulberg Design. So first time, you know, working with a, with a firm like Yabu Kushulberg, which is really, really interesting. Um, and, and honestly, learning a lot about what they were doing and how they were approaching things and all that, and, and you know the beautiful level of drawings they had, and so much detail. And you know, coming from an architectural point of view, with the details are more like construction details and window flashing and this and that. Suddenly, you are in detail, you know, pieces of furniture and this is so it's so interesting and so like you know going to a much level of detail that I that I, I wasn't used to. That I found that really 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 um engaging you know um, that's amazing especially as a as a trained architect where it's all about the details right yeah. who was it who said god is in the details is that Mies van der Rohe or someone like that Must yeah but like but, I yeah. feel like and that but that's really that is that where your appreciation that the ideas of stage really made you that kind of convert and raise raving fan of interiors I think so. And, and, and you know what? The, the part of it is, is which I think Ian and, and the edition team does really well, is that uh, the design is based, it's, it's what we call an architectural design, which sometimes I don't like that expression, but it means the architecture is really important on, on, on what you're designing. You know, for example, if you see one other uh, or some of our hotels, you'll see that there is a stair that is really iconic. You know, we have it in, um, in a uh, Clock Tower in New York, where one of the first he asked you to come out to the restaurant, and there we did some other times. The last one that uh, we did was in Madrid Edition, which is actually the stair that takes you from the drop off to the lobby, which is in a different level. And uh, it's just a beautiful square space, wooden space with a wide stair coming out of it, you know. So it is, it is very architectural because there's no pieces of furniture, there's no this, there's no that, you know, I mean, there is no details that it's, it's just a basic architecture that's giving you the wow and, the, and, and that sense, you know, the way it's lit, uh, the one you took when you went to um, make you feel you want to go up the stairs and see what's out there, you know? Uh, so it is, um, it is an architectural kind of a way to look at things. And, and mm. you know, like when I was talking about the other, or the more traditional uh, luxury design, it's more about what you add to the space. You know, you have a wall and you add this and then you add a pattern. And let's say you put layers and layers of things, you know. Uh, in the work we do, there's no, la no layers. It's just a very bold but simple statements, you know, on the space. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's something that I, I learned that I didn't, you know, or I learned to have the appreciation now than before. Uh, you know, the one thing that I always think is that, you know, to work on a brand like this um, and you're not the interior designer of the brand, you have to have a huge appreciation for what they're doing because in a way you feel like you are protecting them in a little bit, um, you know, or you find yourself when I'm on, on my role about um, 
um, design management, project management, you're, you're dealing with, you know, the, the air conditioning system, the plumbers, you know, the engineers and all that. And then you have the design team here trying to do this really perfect, beautiful work. And you're kind of like, you know, sometimes you get into like a protective mode because you know, you're fighting with an engineer. You know, you need that drill there, you know, but we're like, okay, how can we hide it? Can we, how can we make it better and all that? Because I know that for the design, it's a really important piece, you know. So it's a, I, I think that's part of um, the learning through the, through the process, through the, the work on addition. Um, and another really important piece of, of uh, I think, of our team, um, and may, maybe the designers will appreciate a little bit of this, is that uh, everybody has a role and everybody knows what the role is on the, on the overall piece. And um, that's really important, mm. you know, the designer is the designer and, and then you have to protect the roles of everybody. So you get a, a really much more um, stronger piece at the end of that, you know, you don't get a mishmash of a little bit of everything. Mm. And have you always been, because I've heard you say protective a lot, it's almost like I'm getting the feeling that, you know, you're protecting this part to let that nurture or evolve or grow in some way. And then this one is you're nurturing over here and over here, but it all kind of comes together into this Congress of something very unique, which is what I think edition has. Were, did you always approach projects that way? Um, no, not previously, to be honest, not, not uh, until I started on this, uh, on the edition um, and the hospitality path, you know, I've done all the work as a, a sad solution as well as it's just hospitality in general, but, um, but I think it's really important, you know, I think, uh, on, on the hospitality world, what we, and we, as, as a married, as a, uh, as a mere hospitality company, the, the, the big strengths that we have is in the brands that we have, you know, that's, that's our company strengths and protecting those brands is, is, you know, is what we should do. Mm. Is uh, you know, there's things, there's things that need to work. You know what I mean? But it doesn't mean that it needs to be obvious. But but they, you know, their condition needs to work. The water has to be hot. You know, this, that needs to happen no matter what. But at the end of the day, what is going to bring the 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 people and and the focus on the brands is what's happening, what you feel in and what you see in, you know, as a interior design part, as a design of the spaces and the inside of the hotel. So. Uh, that's what I think we need to protect that. We need to all work towards that. Yeah. And then I know I, I asked a bunch of questions about, you know, how Schrager yeah. and his team helped Marriott and you evolve and grow and, uh, you know, using that spear point as a, as a metaphor on the other side, if you were to ask Ian, having worked with Marriott and built this edition brand and, how, how do you think Marriott, you and Marriott helped, um, helped Ian Schrager and his team evolve? <laughs> That's such a tricky question. I guess, I mean, you have to ask them for sure, but uh, um, I think through the years and through the process of doing things, I think uh, there's been a learning from both sides. You know, of course, we learn a lot from, from what they do. And I think they also have learned from what we do in terms of, you know, um, our expertise and, uh, on the hospitality world in terms of the operations, in terms of the, of the, even to the physical, you know, like I was saying, it's, it's, it's not what the guest comes first, you know, having the hot water on the, in the building, but, but how important that is as part of the, the complex of the hotel, you know, I think they learned that part of it. And then, I will, I would like to say that they have a bit more respect on on what that um what all that kind of machine behind the scenes is, is, is doing for the hotel, you know. Mm -hmm. Um but uh yeah. Mm. And well, then actually, and then as you as you know, as you're kind of on this path with addition and Marriott going forward and how your experience has evolved and really looking at not only the details, but the experience of, be, of all these different elements of a stage. 
Mm -hmm. um, and you look at the path you guys are, path, are paving forward, what's exciting you most about what lays ahead of you and Marriott? You know, um, I will have to say, see in addition, growing and growing, you know, um, like I told you, when we started, we had one property in Waikiki, then we had another property in, uh, in Istanbul, which was a really interesting project. Um, and then, so what happened at that time, then the recession came as a 2009 and 10, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, so at that point, the company decided to invest some of the money into pushing the, the brand forward, you know, because the, the market in general for, for owners wasn't, uh, was drawn out because of the recession. So company went ahead and bought three buildings, one in London, the Berners hotel, uh, the clock tower in New York, uh, and Madison park. And then, uh, in, uh, Miami beach, the Seville hotel. And there were three existing buildings, um, in which we renovated, you know, first was London, then clock tower, which was a really, really interesting project. Uh, this was, I don't know if you're familiar with it. This is a midlife building, mm. uh, on Madison square. That, so the tower itself is what the hotel is. And uh, from a technical, I, used to, view, I, I hmm? used to live right around the corner. I was on twentieth uh, and seventh, so I'm very familiar with the whole story. Yeah, but yeah, keep yeah. going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, the 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 tower was, you know, Bill was the tallest tower in New York for I don't know how long for, for months, maybe. But um, but the whole building was, yeah, it was a competition. But the whole building was the midlife building, and and then what happened is that. Uh, the company bought the, the tower only, of course, on the building. So it was a little bit of a surgical separation from the systems and all that from the technical side to separate the tower from the from the building itself. But the big challenge on the tower is such a small footprint. And then you have a yeah. lot of whole hotel vertically. Guest rooms is not that hard in a sense that you know in a small spaces, but when you get to the whole um public spaces and functioning of the hotel, it becomes a big challenge because everything is vertical. You know, all the services back to house and all that is stuck in small areas all throughout, I don't know, 10 stores of the building on the back. So um, so that was really, you know, that really gave gave us a really uh, confidence in terms of saying the company is really committed to this brand and we're going to be developing, you know, we're going to put the money into it. Of course, the other side of it is, you know, developing these projects uh, where well, the company investment was a little bit more stressful than, than any other project. <laughs> yeah. you have a lot of eyes looking at what you're doing, but it was, it was a beautiful experience and, and we we're really happy with the project. So you're, you're look, you're asking me what I look forward to it. And I look forward to, to this brand and growing it more and more. Uh, you know, we, we're covering a really good, um, piece of the, piece of the business in terms of, uh, uh, resorts. You know, we have a resort in Bodrum that we did uh, uh, be up in Mecca, but four years now before pandemic. So we did that project. It's doing really well. We did another one in China in Hainan Island called the Sanya Edition. That's doing really well also. So it's um, it's a little bit of an organic growing. You know, you know, there's interesting places, and we go there and we go. You know, the little team moves forward to there, to there, to there, and develop this this. Um, this hotel, but on the future, I just, I just, you know, I'm really excited to see how this whole thing grows and and uh, and the brand really keep establishing itself and um, becoming this iconic thing, you know. Yeah, and then the growth is amazing. And if you look at if you look at the projects that are that can be spoken about that are on the horizon, are there any in particular that you're most excited about? Yeah, yeah. There's some that really. I mean, you don't want to play favorites. <laughs> no, you love yeah. you love all your children equally. <laughs> but uh, we have uh, we're working on one in Lake Como that is a really exciting mm -hmm. project that we're, we're going to be working on. Um, we we already started designing all that, so that's really really exciting. Milan is exciting. The location is you know can compare. <laughs> Uh, so we have that one and, you know, that's, this. you know, there's, there's all the ones around. We do another, uh, we have two more, uh, resorts in Mexico, one in Canai, which is going to open next year. Uh, 
beautiful, beautiful hotel sitting on mangroves. Um, wow. And then you just walk to the beach and come back and everything's like kind of floating into these green spaces. It's beautiful. So, you know, those, those very, very uh, special places, but those all gone, that's, you know, that's something that, you know, that, that is really, really exciting and see how it keeps going and going. And uh, as well, though, I know, I'm, I know you mentioned the complexity of kind of partitioning off the clock tower from the rest of the MetLife building to do the New York edition. If you look back over all of the additions that you've worked on, wearing your architect hat, and, and also describing all those details, which one do you think was the most challenging of all of them and why? Uh, clock tower for sure. Oh, really? Okay. Clock tower was really challenging building. Um, like I tell you, skinny footprint, there was, there was a historic building, so we needed to respect mm -hmm. the outside of the building. Internally, we only had uh, one floor that was preserved, which is where the restaurant is on the second floor. Mm -hmm. So that used to be the offices for the midlife um, executive uh, staff. Uh, so there's some beautiful wood, you know, um, details and a huge fireplace. And there were the, the main office for the CEO or whatever president was. Uh, but that was the most difficult one technically. I mean, one of the things, for example, we had to replace all the stairs because the mm -hmm. stairs didn't comply with code. So... The you know, it were some days that you went to the building and you look up and you'll see 10 stories space inside the building where the new stair was going to be placed, you know, because you had to remove sections of the structure. You couldn't do it all at once because the building will, will oh my goodness, bubble. so you had to do it by section to section, then the other one, then this one, then the other one. I think so. Mm. Um, even the mechanical, the, the way the mechanicals, um. How to be laid out, you know, it has to be drawn in you know, a sort of metric in perspective to see how you could transfer the ductwork and all that and this. So it was a really, a really um, mm. exciting and difficult, and, and you know, we spend that we used to go to our or our, our meetings every week uh, on Thursdays. You know, I spent the whole day on Thursday in New York to, you know, attending the meetings and all that. But it was was very exciting. It's a, wow. From an architectural point of view, it was really, really interesting. And then seeing how the old interiors kind of layering into this space was really beautiful. Yeah, it's an amazing hotel. You um, mean? I, oh yeah, I was actually yeah. I just had drinks there a couple of weeks ago with a friend of mine, and um, it's a, it's awesome. I love it every time I walk into that. It's such an iconic property, and it's hard to believe that it's not that old. And it, I feel like it. When I walk in there, I feel like it was always meant to be a hotel, and it's wild to me that it, that it isn't. So uh, if anyone ever has a chance, you're ever uh, around Madison Square Park in New York City, just go. I highly recommend go check it out, see if some rooms are available, and see. Um, Osvaldo, as you're looking to the future and these new exciting projects that are on the horizon, um, and you're kicking them off because I'm, you know, they're all architecturally interesting and have their own levels of complexity. When you get a new project on your table, what excites you most about a new project? And then what's also like, what's the most challenging part at the onset of a new project for you? So it's kind of that double-edged sword. It's super exciting, but from your experience and all the additions that you've worked on, yeah, yeah. this is the most, this is the most challenging part of getting all these people to work together. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the, I mean, the most exciting part, of course, is where the hotel is going to be. That's always, you know, the location is, is, is a highlight, you know. Um, and um, if you have an existing building, even though, you know, it's going to be very complicated to resolve, it's always exciting about seeing that existing property and and going through it and seeing if we can see things in it, you know, so hiding the, the building, I mean, the floor to ceiling high is enough to get a room in there, or can you get a lobby, can we demolish this lab and get a larger space, you know, that, <coughs> excuse me, that's always very exciting. Um, uh, the hardest part is usually getting uh, the teams and donors to understand all the non-public areas that you need to to service a, a project well. <clears throat> you know what I mean? You get into, you know, the, the, usually the first time you you see a set of drawings, you know, there's hardly any back of house. You know, there might be 
an office here and then, you know, housekeeping there and let's see that. And I mean, when you have a team that knows hospitality before, you know, they know what they're getting to, but uh, mm-hmm. most of the time when you get an order, you have to like start stressing about um, how the whole machine works together, you know, um, and how, you know, always, you know, insist on them, you know, so, and, and to the point about having a luxury experience, you know, a luxury experience requires a certain amount of spaces and certain amount of people to to deliver that experience. You know, you cannot deliver experience and with, with if you don't have the, the proper, uh, you know, uh, facilities back there. You know, if if you have uh, that's a, that's yeah. actually super interesting to me because if you think about if I were going to build an addition hotel, you know, it's a statement piece. It's all about using your stage metaphor that you brought up. It's a it's a stage for all the guests and the neighborhood or location that's around or like check out this really cool new unique property but i'll also say and i love that you talked about the back of the house because from all the additions that i've been in the people working there it's that kind of different type of luxury you were talking about at the beginning of the conversation i love that you said oh we got to really think about what's happening back of house because that's the stage you have to build for them because that's how you attract the right people that can, you know, be the the stagehands and the and the experience for the guests that are coming through. Because I don't know, I I remember a, a, I don't know their names, but I, I just remember a lot of interactions with unique interactions with people that have worked at Edition Hotels. It it must really help with um, the recruiting and and the overall culture of the properties as well. Yeah, you 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 hope so. I mean, I expect so that uh, you know our our um, operations team does a great job of on the, the part about the culture, the brand, and, and getting people and getting people really engaged and excited about what they're doing. You know, this this is not just a job. This is actually uh, you know, there's more than just a job. And 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 uh, you know, sort of drinks in a bar. You know, there's a lot of it. Um, a lot more. Um, and you got to get people that understand that and, and that enjoys that as well, you know, because you have to have enjoyment that you can actually feel from there when you're saving you the drink or, or you know, helping you on the checking desk. Uh, so they do a great job for that. Um, and, um, and and the part of the design that we try to, you know, we try to pay a little bit of attention is that when you design in the, the back of house, you know, the changing rooms, you know, is something that I always feels insist with the with the teams, you know, it's just, you know, so you know, there's no difference. It's managed to the money you do it in, in the bed in the guest room upstairs. You know, you have to be able to put makeup on this. So don't, so don't give me a little ball and in the one exposed ball in front of me, you know. So I mean you have to really set up this nicely if you want somebody to be look great and, and they can feel they look great and then go back into the into the hotel feeling that way. So it's it's not part of that building that that um, it's a little bit of an experience if you think about it that way for the on the back of house. Of course, there's usually no budget for it. <laughs> so, yeah, so you're uh, you know there's no money for everything, but there is there's a lot of ways you can do it with a proper planning um, uh, to get you know a, a nice you know cafeteria or whatever uh, uh, employee cafeteria where, where there is not just the food but people can see it and check the emails in order and the breaks and, you know, it's a nice environment, you know, sometimes we like to say that uh, we, we like to bring a little bit of the design of the hotel into the, into the cafeteria downstairs. Uh, in some place you have used uh, materials left over from construction or, you know, there's some rejects, some repair has to be done. Just bring the material, we use it here. We can, you know, we can do something here with it. So, mm. so it's part of that, um, it's part of that, um, bringing that, uh, their experience to the place as well, you know. And so, then, oh yeah, keep going. One thing that you said that uh, that is definitely I learned a lot of working in Merritt that you really get an appreciation for the people that work in the hotels, mm-hmm. uh, doing this work and going through the reopening process. And you know, everybody's kind of you know, you know on deck trying to uh, finish it and helping. What I can do, what I can do, you know, when you're on the fast and on those last few days. Um, the reopening. So you really develop really strong relationships with the teams and the GFs and all that. So it's it's really a it's really a team effort that goes beyond the front of house. Totally. Yeah. I opening hotels is it's amazing. Like you're basically handing over the keys to this incredibly complex machine 
that is still figuring itself out, all the different systems, all the different people, just getting everything to work in Congress so that when a guest walks in and it's really just, a, they don't notice anything. Um, it, that's a real art. And all those all those teams that specialize in the opening of hotels, I mean, they're, they're a really interesting, like a very rare breed of people because yeah. it's not only the, the crucible of the schedule to open, but you're also troubleshooting everything that could go wrong. It's insane. At the same time, you know, what, what we call the, you know, the countdown time, you know, the, you know, the, the training that happens right before the opening and all that is, you know, we as, as a, uh, part of the global design piece where kind of on site, but doing other things, you know what I mean? Do the punch work and this and that and solving last minute issues. But we get to um, to uh, witness and participate in some of that. And it's really, really uh, exciting you know, when you meet everybody. And, you know, there is there is uh, one part of the opening where the, uh, there is a fashion show with all the uniforms, you know, that and this, that is it's so great. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Um, as well, though, if I were to do, my, if I did my math correctly, you started with edition 15 years ago, right? Yep. So th is that 2007 or six? 2007, October 2007, actually. Oh, wow. October. So <laughs> now that I keep in count. <laughs> <laughs> you're better at math than me. You're better at math than me. Um, if, if the Oswaldo I'm talking to right now were to stand in front of the Oswaldo who had no hospitality experience, basically was tasked with bridging the gap between this enormous hotel company and this really entrepreneurial, um, visionary boutique hotelier. What advice would the Oswaldo that I'm speaking to right now give the Oswaldo of 2007? Oh, wow. Okay. Um. Advice, you know, I will say, um, I will say, you know, really get, um, or somebody that were in that position, I will say, says really learn and absorb everything you can from, from this, from the EN team and the EN, uh, way of thinking and, uh, and the vision, uh, structure and all that, because, you know, this is, this is a, an opportunity that you know, not everybody gets. So, you know, just realize where you are and enjoy it and, you know, absorb everything you can. <laughs> yeah. And, and I know you absorbed it because you're, you're still there and you're doing great work. And if you were to look at all the different things that you've absorbed, actually, before I think I go into the, all the different things, do you think the Oswaldo of 2007 was as open to absorbing everything as the Oswaldo of now? Like, did you know what you were getting into with the Schrager team? Oh, no. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, like I told you, I mean, I, I was really new to the hospitality and the, even to the design, you know, I don't know how you call it, high level design or whatever you want to call it. Um, so, uh, no, I didn't know what was getting into it, you know. Uh, I was just trusting my instinct. I said, this is something interesting, something different to what I've been doing. So I'm going for it. Uh, but that's as much as I knew. And, and, and to be honest, I don't think a lot of people knew what the, the end result was going to be or the, you know, the process was going to be. It's probably like everybody was kind of, okay, let's do it. So I'm talking about internally married, you know? Um, yeah. Let's do it. Let's try right. to figure out. And it was kind of, you figure it out, you figure it out. You know? <laughs> and also, you know, kudos to Mr. Marriott for, being able to kind of be the mad scientist of putting these two ingredients together too, right? So, so this was actually um, as much as Mr. Mario as uh, Arnie Sorensen's uh, um, baby. You know, I mm -hmm. think it was, he was crucial and he was really engaged in this brand. And and I think he protected a lot of the brand, uh, you know, especially in the early days when, you know, there was a lot of, you know, internal discussions and this, and we do this, you know, we're spending money on, on those three properties that, that is company money. Should we spend more money to do this and stuff? These things that are, and things are valuable for the project. And I said, okay, maybe they're not as valuable. We need to be some of it, you know? So he was really, um, 
critical in those discussions and, and, and having the vision, you know, he really had a vision for what this brand could be. Um, oh, see, okay. That's interesting because when we were first talking, I thought I, I was picking up from you that it was um, Mr. Marriott. Um, but Arnie, I think the industry really misses him. No, oh, yeah. I, I think he was just an incredible visionary. Um, and I actually didn't realize that he was so protective in the birth of this brand as well to let it kind of nurture and throwing extra money at it. Yes, yes, he was. And, you know, mm. when, when I said about Mr. Meredith, because, you know, in, uh, in those days, uh, Arnie wasn't the CEO yet. Uh, what was his position then? Um, You know, I'll owe you. I mail you. <laughs> yeah, you email me that. But it, wow, so he he even as not the CEO stepped up and was like, "No, we have to, we have to protect this. This is part of the vision. We have to make this happen. We have to birth this." Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, yeah, because I guess what I can't remember. I, I have to, to let you know later what the roles exactly were. But uh, Mr. Mayor was really involved in the whole process at the beginning when we were doing, for example, Clock Tower. You know, we're doing mm -hmm. a clock tower. He was really involved and we will sit down and review the plans and what are we doing on this floor? What are we doing on the top of the tower? How are you gonna do that space and all that? So it was really a engaged in that at that time. Mm -hmm. So it was um it was as much as uh, his his input to the protection that uh, Arnie uh, provided to uh to the brand that was really important. Yeah. Wow. And then to th well also to use that kind of spearhead as addition as a you know the trailblazer for marriott to kind of fill in all these other brands obviously they acquired starwood and that brought on a lot of brands as well that they had to you know figure out how it all worked together yeah um i yes yeah, so but i said you have to think about marriott in 2007 it was yeah a, it's when it was very different to what it is right now totally yeah, yeah exactly. it's, a, it's nowhere near the same company it's it's evolved so much and that evolution and trajectory, I mean, so much of that was Arnie, right? And I, I've actually, I've never, ever, ever heard anything but just accolades or appreciation about Arnie Sorensen. Yeah. That's great, amazing. Great, great um, leader. And, uh, you know, I mean... You probably hear this many times, but you know, you were you were walking on the hallway with him, you know, and I see him on the hallway and you know, it's so it's so warm and hello, how you doing? You know, there is always, you know, you felt like it's one of the other guys on the on the building, even though he was a mini guy. Uh, but um he was a very original person, you know, to get mm. that, you know. Well, I you know, I think going back to the beginning of the conversation where just Schrager and Marriott just seemed like such odd bedfellows, but it really, it, I, I, it really just paved the way for so much at the trajectory of Marriott and Marriott, uh, you know, being a cornerstone of, of our industry, right. Of the big brands, like they're definitely one of the, the, the biggest and really influential, but you know, there's so many of them all work together. I think it helped all the other ones kind of have to shift and kind of really think about what they do in the boutique um lifestyle space as well and it's just been an, an incredible um evolution to watch and inspiration to watch to, for everyone uh, and it's really cool that you've been a part of it from the very beginning with 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 no preconceived notions and you just kind of jumped right in and it helped guide it yeah i feel very very fortunate actually to to have been on that spot <laughs> the right place at the right time i guess but uh yeah, it is. It, and, and, you know, you see how hard it is to actually create a brand from scratch. You know, it's just, it is a, it is a uphill battle and, and, you know, expensive and messy and, <laughs> but, uh, but a great experience. And then I guess another question is like creating a brand from scratch and how difficult it is if you were to stack up all the thing, all the difficult parts of making a brand as you look in the rearview mirror which one of those did you learn the most from or what was the most what was the most difficult part about building a brand and and how did you learn from that how did how did it help you grow 
I, I think, you know, for, for, from from a design point of view, I think it's been, you know, it, it's been a, like I told you before, it's a, a little bit of an organic process. You know, if mm -hmm. you look at the properties early on, uh, what well, he's not there anymore, but uh, if you look at that to to what Burns was in in London to Clock Tower, there is a little bit. You know, from a from a high level design point of view, there's a little bit of like trying to find a way to tap on the design, and then you can see how that kind of gets more and more focused as time goes by. Um, and I think we are at, in, we're now in a point where there is a much more stronger uh, brand, uh, what you call an identity or brand uh, experience that perhaps wasn't as as uh, as defined early on. You know, so so that's been a a huge. Uh, learning that I appreciate, you know, in terms of, you know, putting together a brand, you know, let it, kind of let it happen and let it breathe and let it uh, finally live its own way um, in the, in that sense. The other things that I think is, is it's not a design piece, but, uh, you know, having the right partners to do it, you know, getting the right um, owners, you know, as, as you know, Mary, the, the brass were the operators for the, I mean, the buildings were the operators um, of the hotel. So, um, Having the the um, uh, the right partners that it, they're willing to invest and, and appreciate what you do is really important. You know, mm -hmm. the brand is is it's kind of like in some sense it's not a brand for everybody type of thing. You know, it's like right. Uh, of it also, it goes back to that old adage of you know when you're creating or when you're trailblazing or planning something, sometimes perfect is the enemy of good. Right. You got to yes. like get all those parts together and just get good going. And then yeah. it evolves into perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Although well, I would say we're really, really, uh, <laughs> and our owners will tell you that we really, really striving for perfect. But, um, but it's part of, you know, it's, it's part of the process. You know, we, we just want to have the best, the best that can be, you know, and then we really, uh, we have learned from Ian and from his team to be really focused on detail and, and, and not giving up a little bit in a sense like you know, like you said, you know, okay, it's not acceptable. It has to be better than that. You know, can we mm -hmm. just, okay, you know, this is not a, you know, this, that's, that's not what we do type of thing, you know? So, yeah. So that's, well, that's been, um, uh, an experience as well. A learning experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, well, as well, this has been really fantastic. If people wanted to learn more about addition or, connect with you what's the best way for them to do that uh just, you know reach out to me uh, linkedin you know i'm on linkedin so um or I, I can also give you my um my email afterwards that you can post it or so so people can check it out but yeah that's uh and we'll also put the edition um we'll put all the edition website up there website. so that people can see what's going on I, I recommend everybody that has an edition close by just go have a drink go have a you know, if it's not um, a stay, at least a visit because it's really a good experience. So, yeah, yeah. I, I I can vouch for that as well. <laughs> uh, well, as well, though, I want to personally thank you. I mean, this has just been really wonderful to kind of peer behind the curtain of how these two different ideas came together to create something really cool and and kind of open up bandwidth and yeah. and experience to what what else is possible. And again, like from 2007 to now it's marriott it's just so it's a different different a whole different world yeah yeah well thanks for having me this has been great i mean it's, it's kind of fun to go back you know uh, in time and just think about things you know you, your questions are making me kind of like uh, put things in context and kind of like <laughs> revisit things and all that so it's great oh, wonderful and also I'd, I'd be remiss if i didn't thank our listeners um again we keep growing people are really into all these conversations that we're having every week we get a little bit bigger so uh thank you and if this has changed your perception on what hospitality is and how to create spaces where hospitality flourishes or new ideas of what hospitality are please share the podcast with a friend because we've been growing by word of mouth so uh everyone thank you and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.